Hello, okay, friends. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching my video, my channel is all about orchids. From what orchids I have, how I grow them, my thoughts on certain orchid topics, to what orchids in my collection are blooming, etc. So, if you want to follow along my orchid hobby adventure, please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on the notification. In this video today, we're going to take a look at my Phalaenopsis Flying Eagle Wilson. And this video is going to be somewhat of a summary video of this orchid's performance in bloom this year. And I will also talk a little bit about my environment in terms of humidity as well as the temperature range that I keep my growth space in as well as a little bit about how I handle this orchid in semi-hydro. So if we go back in time, it's really around beginning of 2019, January 2019, that I started to see a new spike emerging. This orchid had two older spikes that dried up from last year, and then came in March, that was when this orchid started to really trying to mature its two buds and around end of March was when this orchid started to open its first flower for this year. For this orchid, I, the parentage is to trespass C1 and dragon tree eagle. And this orchid has a very interesting aspect because it inherited the characteristics of Terespis C1, where sometimes the petal or se sepal color may change depending on some people believe it's temperature, some people believe it's sunlight exposure, but for this particular orchid, for me anyways, it's always the petals, right? The top right or top left petals that would vary in color. Sometimes it's all red, sometimes it's all yellow, sometimes it's, it's anywhere in between, like kind of like a gradient, uh, a mixture between red and yellow. So after the first blooming, it, it was around June that I noticed that another section of the spike had elongated and, and was trying to put out three new buds. And it was around end of June 2019 that it started to bloom again. And this time around, because it's three flowers, so I was able to really compare how the flowers look like. And later in this video, you're going to see um, these three flowers all look slightly different. And I think it was like on Independence Day that this orchid, you know, came became in full bloom. So I was really happy because I had friends over and um, they were able to look at this orchid and and enjoy it. They have never seen anything like th like this. Um, so here you see the three flowers and the top right petals of each flower all had slightly different variations of red and yellow. Like one is purely yellow. And then the one in the far in the background is almost red, um, and then another one somewhere in between. And then time went by, end of June, sorry, end of July. I noticed that there was another bud trying to come out. I wasn't really quite sure if that would actually become fruition, so I so I went ahead and took some photos, but didn't think that it would actually make it because in my environment, summertime it was quite hot. And I was also pretty busy, so I, for some time, was pretty much neglecting a lot of my orchids. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. But thankfully, around beginning of August, I started to see this bud be becoming bigger and bigger. And then I was like, wow, this orchid is really going to put out a third round of bloom, even though it's just one bud. And since we're talking about orchid flower buds, might as well talk a little bit about the reasons why sometimes buds would blast. I get that question a lot. And personally, I think there are a couple important factors, right? Environmental changes, and that has to do with change of temperature, change of humidity, change of sunlight exposure, 
and then there is that moving around, right? Some people move their orchid around so much, right? One day in living room, another in the kitchen, and then another day in the bathroom or wherever. And if if they're in buds, you really don't want to move them. And then another big reason category would be the overall health of the orchid. If the an orchid is having root rot issue, stem rot issue, crown rot issue, or even pest infestation or virus, right? Or even soft rot, black rot, whatever. Then sometimes they just don't have that energy to continue to focus on maturing their buds. Then it, you know they would drop. So some of these factors or all of them <laughs> will potentially contribute to your bud blast. So just be aware. And personally, when my orchids are in buds, I try not to move them at all. I would try to just guess a an, a certain amount of water that it would need. I try. I don't even want to move them for watering. And with this orchid, because it's in semi hydro, so it's particularly easy for me to just you know provide a guesstimate, right? I guess and estimate the amount of water, which is bet anywhere between quarter cup of water to one eighth of a cup, right? Depending on the greenness of the roots and and my humidity sometimes i feel this orchid needs a little bit more water then i will give it quarter cup sometimes i will give it only one eighth of a cup if i feel that this orchid really is not quite completely dried out in the media so it's quite easy for me to do it that way without having to move this orchid but once a month though i do use another same size container and double cup it just so that i can soak this orchid really good and sometimes that is, you know, soaking of one to two hours. And then I would drain out the water completely and let it just kind of go, you know, from wet to dry for a whole week. And then for the next time, I would then provide water and full of fertilizer. And if you're new to this orchid hobby, the reason this orchid can continue to bloom three different times is because this orchid has this characteristic called sequential blooming, right? So this orchid is a sequential bloomer and that's why it does this. So my overall rule of thumb for flower spike is when it's in green, when it's green, I don't cut it. I only cut it when it's turning yellow and or, or already dry, then I will cut it off. Otherwise, keep it just keep the green spike because if it's a sequential bloomer it will continue to elongate um, and, and give you more bloom but even if it's not a sequential bloomer sometimes it will give you secondary spikes and sometimes it would just you know produce baby orchids so we call that keikis coming out of um, a, a node on the spike so a lot of things can happen and then another thing is, even if this orchid is, you know, unfortunately aborting um, its spike, there is juice or energy stored in these flower spike that could potentially be recycled back into the plant itself. So that's what I believe in. So I don't cut it away um, when it's still in green. And in terms of my environment for the summertime, I set my central air to 80 degree Fahrenheit and my growth space for the orchid usually is 3 to 4 degree higher but I would never let my growth space to be higher than 85 degree Fahrenheit. And then in winter I try to let it go below 55 degree Fahrenheit but I try but in general I keep it at 60 degree Fahrenheit just to provide that nighttime temperature cool down that a lot of Phalaenopsis would need to initiate the flower spike for the coming season bloom season and in terms of humidity I prefer between 50 to 60 percent humidity. Some people I know they keep it at 70, which requires a lot of probably humidifiers to to be on for a long time. Personally, I don't prefer that. I don't like that because if your growth space is somewhat connected to your overall living space, high humidity really sometimes is not good for your furniture, clothes, or just you know a lot of the wood products so i think 50 to 60 percent is pretty 
working pretty well, relatively well for my environment. So I want to share、um, the temperature range as well as the humidity range with you. Overall, I think this orchid is a pretty hardy orchid. It's not finicky, and it does have a really, really pleasant fragrance. It does also come with a pretty big price tag. I mean, it's not huge. It's not too expensive, but you can expect this orchid to be anywhere between forty to fifty dollars for a mature, blooming size plant. I think it's worth it because every time it blooms, it's full of surprises. This is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to get more orchid-related videos from my channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification. I want to wish you happy growing, and I will talk to you in my next video. Ciao.